tree I'm going to be doing today is an olive from the mainland of Spain, from the area of Castellon. Some of the best olives in the whole world come from the island of Mallorca. And um, while I was doing work in Mallorca, one of the students offered to take me up into the high mountains and show me some of the examples of very old olives. Uh, and some of these trees are, are up to 5,000 years old and incredible, incredible sculptural pieces. Um, the thing is, yeah, there's a lot of Mallorca and olives on the market for sale, but they're incredible prices. So what I decided to do, yeah, for this video, yeah, was take you through um, actually carving um, uh, an ordinary mainland olive, yeah, into a Mallorcan style. The other thing is, this tree started off as a, as a twin trunk, a very boring tree. And you can see I've already done some work on this side of the tree. What I intend to do today is just have fun and, uh, and naturalize this piece of wood even more. Uh, there'll be photos on the basho um, showing you the first example of the tree yeah, before it got to this stage. And I'll also put some more examples of mainland trees that I've carved in the same reflection. Uh, let's talk about the, the tools that I'm going to be using, yeah, because it's a very important part of the, the whole thing with carving. Uh, the tool I'm going to be using is a Makita die grinder. Um, and this has 25,000 RPM. Um, you can use this with a sewing machine pedal yeah, to slow the rate down. But the trouble is I've become so used to not using that that I use it at full speed. Yeah? It's, uh, it's a little bit more tricky, yeah, but I prefer it that way. Um, the other thing is, is there's a new design of Makita die grinder. Uh, and it has a big metal shaft bolted to this part. Well, I find that cumbersome, yeah? This is the old Makita, yeah, with this very ergonomic neck on it. And it's very good, yeah, you know, because it's, it's just the right size, yeah, for holding in your hand, yeah? You know, and uh, I, I prefer this tool. So what I've done, yeah, is I've gone out and I've bought four of these tools before they go away, yeah. I reckon I'm only gonna need four in my lifetime, yeah, so I've gone out and bought them, yeah, and they're stashed away for the future. So if any of you can get hold of this old Makita, that's the way forward. The other tool I'm gonna to be using is the Dremel. Um, it's a crafting tool, and uh, I think this is one of the best tools, yeah, for the smaller work. Um, the other thing is you might notice is it's digital. On the non-digital ones, they tend to um, they tend to blow up, yeah, because they start at a high rate of speed. On this one, yeah, you can start from five, yeah, and go up to I don't know what it is about fourteen, I think something like that, yeah. Um, and if you start this at a low ratio, then you don't blow it up, yeah. This Dremel, yeah, you know, is ideal for smaller work, yeah. So this is the other tool I'm going to be using, the Dremel. And the tools that I use, uh, the tools from uh, a guy in Holland, yeah, uh, his firm's called Samurai.com, and uh, I find these to be the best tools. You see these tools, yeah, what they have is they have uh, carving buckets that you can remove and replace when they're worn down. These are ideal, yeah. You get like this size one, and maybe this size one, which is much smaller, and a longer one for Sabamikis. And also, yeah, he does the smaller tools for the Dremel. Now this one looks pretty innocuous, but I can tell you, yeah, that this tool, yeah, is my pencil. Uh, it's an incredible tool. It just looks like a dro broken drill bit, but what you can do with this tool is incredible. So this is really important, this one as well, yeah. If you have this, these two, and the longer one, and a sanding device, yeah, that's all you need to do the carving. Okay, what we're gonna do now, yeah, one of the one of the most important weapons in the armory of bonsai is uh, the orientation of the tree. Now this tree yeah, is very static where it stands and people tend to keep their trees very static out of the pot. So what I'm gonna to do to this is put a bit of energy into the tree, visual energy, by bringing the tree up towards me, yeah?
that's more or less there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark the front of the tree because you need this reference point. If you don't have a reference point, yeah, you're carving all over the place. You need an absolute front on the tree. Okay, and the way we do this, yeah, is with three pieces of wire like this. So I'm now going to move in and make the absolute front on this tree so I have the reference point to work to. Okay, the reason I've used uh, three pieces of wire here is if you use one piece of wire you can move around the tree and there's no absolute front. So what I've done here is made a datum line, yeah? You know, across there, yeah, then you've got visually, yeah, the correct front. Okay, the thing I'm going to do now is to start to carve. The first thing I have to do is sort out the profiles. That's the first job. So what I'm going to do first is go down here and sort out my profile, putting more visual energy into this trunk line. Usually what I'd do is go round and mark my carving out on, on a piece of wood like this just to give myself a guideline, yeah? But the thing that I want to do today, yeah, is I'm doing this for fun, yeah, you know? So what I want to do is get back in my head where I was in Mallorca, staring at the trees there and do it from something from inside, yeah? So it's a freehand thing with me, yeah? So for this experiment, yeah, well, I'm not going to do any marking on the tree at all. If you can notice here, yeah, what I'm trying to do here yeah, is bring this tree round this way, yeah. So what I do here yeah, is I'm trying to get my profiles, yeah, but I'm also, yeah, cutting, cutting it this way afterwards, yeah. So it does this 
this spiraling sort of effect, yeah, it needs to come this way, yeah, round like this and then and then twist it. So I'm I'm also doing this, yeah, to make it spiral. It's really useful yeah, to have two Makitas on the go because then you don't have to keep changing bits. I'm going to go in now with a smaller tool, yeah? it takes it that much further in. Yeah? At the end of the job, we're going to go in with something that's much longer. So now we're swapping tools to this one. 